The success of the Otterbein community in South Baltimore today is the result of the failure of an interstate roads plan nearly a half century ago and an innovative program of dollar homes for some hardy urban homesteaders. The Otterbein community was strongly influenced, or its development was strongly influenced by the fact that the plan to bring I-95 through immediately through downtown Baltimore was stopped. After that issue of the road failed, um, the, the city was planning to put in two high-rise buildings here by architect Kenzo Tangi, but the, the bond issue failed. And then the city had all of these houses uh, vacant with nothing to do with it. And it was the Schaefer administration that decided to do a dollar house program. The dollar house program was created because the historic homes had been allowed to deteriorate so badly that because it was expected that the highway would go through here. And, and so they were, that provided the opportunity for renovation of those homes through that particular program. The neighborhood, when I purchased the house, the, the neighborhood was more like a war zone. Um, these houses here, there was 110 houses that were offered at the time. And they were totally encased in a chain link fence with barbed wire tops. One of the stories that I love is one of the women says, you know, when they got into these houses, I mean, they were in much worse condition than people even anticipated. So she brought her father to show her, show him the house, and he looked at her and he said, how much did you pay for this place again? Because I think you got ripped off. In the beginning, Otterbein was a bohemian community with lots of very interesting hippies who uh, saw an opportunity to buy a house for a dollar and fix it up and live in it. The neighborhood has changed greatly. Uh, we have a lot of professional people now living in the area and um, there's still a few of us bohemians left. The character of the Otterbein community is really a combination of the historic houses that were here from the 19th century and were renovated under the Dollar House program in the 1970s and the 1980s, plus the new brick homes that were built in order to take the place of former factories or commission houses that had existed in this area, you know, going back into the 19th century. The history of Otterbein was the reason I moved here. Uh, I'm an antique dealer and history buff. And when you look around and see federal and, and Greek revival period homes, uh, you can't build that. It's a technique that is, is, can be redone, but would be extremely expensive to do. So uh, the opportunity to buy a, a federal period home, 1790, and, and restore it, renovate it, and live in it was, was somewhat of a dream. The history of Otterbein uh, means a great deal. I think when you, when you stop and look around and even the cobblestone street which is behind you, uh, those cobblestones were ballast on the ships that came over from England. If you walk up and down Lee Street, these houses have seen so much and you think about how close uh, Federal Hill is and how close we are to where the Star Spangled Banner was inspired, uh, Fort McHenry. Um, to put your feet where so many before you have walked, you can actually, you can actually feel that in this neighborhood. Uh, on many, many levels. The historic landmarks uh, in Otterbein are the houses themselves. Uh, but if you, if you look at the map of 1794, you will see trees that still exist in this community. It's that kind of connection to history that sort of brings it all home. There's an elm tree on the corner of Sharp and Hill Street um, that uh, Frederick Douglass gave speeches under. Uh, it's a block away from here. You know, what, that kind of thing sends chills up your spine when you realize that this was a, this was, Baltimore was, was one of the thriving ports in America and, and here you are right in the center of it.
Well, my history in this community dates back to when I was a child. We are just an open community, which is trying to work and get our families the best we can. There's a little stamp of each individual person who's lived here. To put your feet where so many before you have walked. That kind of thing sends chills up your spine. Watch My Town, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. on Charm TV. We are here at, at Wheel Park, which is uh, one of the central points of the Otterbein community. It was created in uh, about 1982. Uh, it's a piece of sculpture uh, that represents the original cable car system in Baltimore, which existed from 1891 to 1898. Uh, the wheels were part of the mechanism that enabled the cable cars to move. Another thing about Otterbein are these wonderful little walkways behind the homes that allow you to, to enjoy the backs of the houses. This particular one ends up at Homesteader Park. Our interior parks are a major part of, of Otterbein. Uh, Homesteader Park, Hanover Square, Wheel Park, where we are right here today. These were all created at the time that the, in the 1980s when the Otterbein community was created as it exists today and they are a major part of making this a green kind of a place. Well, living in the city and having green space like this is extremely unique. It brings our community together. We have parties, people walk their dogs, children are playing. I look out my, uh, from my windows. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Uh, the original owners of the home decided whether they wanted planters in front of their properties or not. And the city came in and put in the planters that you see here. This is an original planter. And in addition, they put in a, a tree-lined street with, with a similar type of planter put around it. After you've been in Otterbein for a short while, you'll, you'll notice there's something missing. You see, never see any overhead wires at all. All of the utilities were brought in underground when the, when the area was being developed. One of the additional nice features about Ottermine is these wonderful brick sidewalks that were put in by the city, all done in a herringbone pattern. We're currently at Old Otterbein United Methodist Church. It's the oldest church in continuous use in the Baltimore City area. The old Otterbein Church has, was one of the first Methodist churches in the United States. So it's been here in this community. It's really, you know, the basis of this community. Uh, and in fact, we hold our community association meetings there. It's very much a part of the neighborhood. The main source of revenue for the upkeep of the church is uh, donations through our members, as well as fundraising, which we do through the sale of peanuts and water to the sports fans going to the Orioles games during the summer. The organ at Old Otterbein was built in 1897. It is a Neiman Tracker organ. It was built right here in the city of Baltimore. And the church did a complete restoration in 1994 at a cost of $60,000. Funds of which were raised by the sale of peanuts to Orioles fans going to the baseball game. Otterbein is a delight to live in. It is, uh, it is close to 395, which puts you right onto 95, uh, within a block and a half. Uh, it's ease to access to the airports, to the train stations, and you're right downtown in the Inner Harbor area. We're so close to both the football stadium and the baseball stadium, so we walk to the games and we laugh when everybody else has to wait in traffic to go home. 
What my wife and I like best about living in Water Otterbein is number one, we like it very much being downtown. We're not suburbanites. Uh, and secondly, we like it because it's very, very green. I've lived in Otterbein for about almost 22 years. And uh, we had come from a suburban area. And when the last child was off for college, we looked at each other and said, enough of cutting big lawns and cutting back bushes. We wanted an adult lifestyle. And so we looked into Baltimore City and discovered this beautiful little pocket of green, uh, the neighborhood of Otterbein. And that's why we moved. You know, anything that's going on over in Federal Hill, they have festivals, little street fairs. We can enjoy that. We're extremely close to the theater and arts district. You know, it's just a hop, skip, and away to get to things like the orchestra and the Lyric Opera House, the Hippodrome. So it's just extremely convenient and um, just a very enjoyable experience overall. I'm a big fan, so I think that probably shows. Okay, when I walk around Otterbein, I see people who care about their property, uh, who care about their neighbors, um, who, who are uh, educated, uh, very outgoing, very positive. One of the things I like best about Otterbein is the sense of community and uh, how close the neighbors are to each other and how helpful we all try to be to each other. And I feel as cozy and surrounded by good neighbors here as I ever did in the suburb where I used to live. And that was a big bonus and surprise for me. What price do you put on living in beauty? Every day you come out your door and there's something nice to look at. For more information on Baltimore neighborhoods and full episodes of My Town, go to www.charmtv.tv.